Hey everyone, this is Karen and welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are new to the channel, I am so glad that you stopped by. I hope you will consider subscribing because this shows me that you are enjoying my content as well as it allows me to keep providing you with these delicious recipes. I am so happy to share with you today my um, sorrel recipe, my sorrel drink or my sorrel wine recipe. And if you're not familiar with sorrel, sorrel is an awesome part of the Jamaican Christmas tradition. Its history is traced all the way back to West Africa. Now sorrel is, um, comes from the hibiscus plant, it's from the petal of the hibiscus plant. And it is rich in antioxidants and vitamin C and that's something that we all need this season. Now this recipe is perfectly spiced. It is rich, it is bold, it is tart, it is unapologetically boozy, and this is my version of the Jamaican sorrel drink, and I hope you like it. Okay, so now we are ready to begin. So now I have my dried sorrel, and um, this is kind of what it looks like when it's dehydrated, when it's dried out. And I am using the dry version because it's hard to get the fresh variety here in the States. But just so you know, um, the dry version is going to be way more concentrated than the fresh sorrel. So if you don't want it to be too strong or too concentrated, then you want to definitely go in with less. So I'm actually using a two pound bag. Yes, I did say two pounds, but the size of my pot is 7.5 quarts. So it's going to be a very big pot of sorrel. And I do like my sorrel a bit on the strong side. Um, so I'm going to be using the entire two pound bag. So now that we have our sorrel in our pot, I am going in with some spices and I'm going to be adding some whole cloves as well as uh, my whole pimento seeds. Now, these are going to add such a delicious flavor to our sorrel, but a word of caution when using these because too much of either of these two items will um, overpower our sorrel and we just want to have a nice balance of flavor. So you definitely want to use them sparingly. So now that we have those in, I'm also going to be going in with some dried orange peel. Now, well, these have been sitting out for um, less than a week, so they're not completely dry. There's still a little bit of moisture in there, but that's okay. So I'm going to be adding that to my pot as well. And I'm going to follow that up with some cinnamon sticks. So the last thing we're going to add is some ginger. Now, here's a situation with the ginger, right? Now, some people like to have a very strong ginger presence in their sorrel. I am not one of those people. Now, if you are, and that's okay, you can go ahead and grate the ginger, right? You can also um, go ahead and blend the ginger and then add it that way. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be using a lot of ginger. I'm gonna, I have about either a quarter pound of ginger right here, but I'm gonna be crushing it. That way, um, I just want to have a light note of ginger, a light presence of ginger in my sorrow. I don't want it to be overwhelming, but that's my personal preference. So you are going to adjust this for your own personal taste. Now I am ready to prep my ginger. I am going to be leaving the skin on because it does con um, contain a lot of nutrients and a lot of flavoring. So I always tend to do that. Now you want to make sure that you wash your ginger properly to rinse away any dirt or debris that might still be on there. And I'm going to cut this big piece of ginger into small, um, small chunks, right? Then I'm going to use something really heavy and then I'm going to crush my ginger and add it to the pot. So now that all our ingredients are in the pot, we are ready to move on to our next step and we want to get our sorry ready for steeping. Now there are two methods to consider. Um, for this next step and the first one is to boil the water in a separate container and then pour it onto the sorrel and allow it to sit that way or the second one which is what I'm going to be using is to add the cold water to the pot and bring everything to a boil and then allow that to steep overnight. Now I've used both method over the years and I haven't noticed a difference in any taste or flavor of the sorrel. So I think it's safe to say you use whatever method you're most comfortable with. So the odd work done, right? So the hard work was really the prep part. 
and now we are ready to um, get our steeping going I'm adding my water I'm going in with some cool tap water you want to add enough water to cover everything in your pot once you finish adding your water we are going to bring everything up to a boil on medium flames now you're going to cover your pot and allow everything to boil once it starts to boil you're going to go ahead and turn off your flames and leave the cover on and allow this to sit for at least six hours 24 hours is preferred but at least six hours because you want to make sure that um all that delicious flavor and that beautiful deep rich magenta color from the sorrel is now pushed out into our liquid because you want it to be full body at least I like mine to be full body so you want to cover this and allow it to steep overnight if possible so I just wanted to give you a visual of what it looks like once everything has come to a boil and you can see some physical changes here the sorrel has now expanded from what it was it's now completely hydrated and it's softened up and also if you look at our liquid it's now that deep rich red which I absolutely love so we are just going to allow this to sit overnight with the cover on and allow it to steep um, for a few hours. Look how gorgeous that is. So this is perfect. This is exactly what you want. So now this has been sitting overnight, so I am going to be straining this off. I want to separate the solid bits from my liquid, and I'm going to grab the biggest strainer that I have, and I'm also going to be using a measuring cup to scoop this out. I'm going to throw on some gloves, and I'm going to use my hands to press it out against the strainer to make sure that I get every last bit of liquid that I can from my solids. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and repeat the process until everything is strained out and you have all your solid bits separated from all the liquid. Now, do not throw out those solid bits, right? Not fling them wet. I'm going to talk to you in a minute or so about ways in which you can repurpose this. We don't want to be wasteful. Now, um, just set that aside for now and we'll get back to that in just a minute. Okay, my lovely, let's talk about ways how we can repurpose the solid bits. You can make tea. I am a tea lover. I love sorrel tea. I drink it all year round. You can um, freeze these in some ice cubes. Just place it in the ice cube, add a little bit of water, and freeze it. Once they're frozen, you can remove them, store them in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. When you are ready to make your tea, you could pop them out add your hot water your choice of sweetener and you are good to go boom that's one um you can make a sorrel barbecue sauce so you can make sorrel barbecue chicken or sorrel barbecue chicken wing or whatever you put barbecue sauce on you can make a sorrel chutney um add it to some pork um you can make some jam with it of course you're going to remove um you know the pimento seeds and the orange peel and the the cinnamon and all that other stuff that you don't want to you don't want in um included in whatever you're going to repurpose this in you can do a quick google, google sorry you can do a quick google search on um sorry flavored items and you can repurpose this accordingly just don't throw it out um if you don't want to recreate another dish from this you can also add it to your garden right you can feed it back to the earth that's a, a, a nice way to do it but whatever you do not fling it wet please don't throw it out so now we are ready to add the final touches to our sorrel and we're going to be adding some booze as well as um, sweeten our red label wine we're going to be adding some Ray and nephew white rum the Jamaican white rum and traditionally the red label wine is used but I'm going to be using the port wine now I am not a big fan of the red label wine I only use it when I've run out of my port wine I know 
you want to challenge my Jamaican card, but we can always fight about that in the comments. It's personal preference, and I prefer to use a straight up port wine as opposed to the red label wine. Now just a brief word of caution, if you are sharing this with minors, if you're sharing this with kids, you will need to make two batches, one that will be alcohol free, and the other one will be the turn up batch. That will be the one that's just gonna make you right and make you sing it. Fa la 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 through the rest of the season. Now, as I mentioned before, I do use a port wine um, over the red label wine, and I use the Fairbanks port. This is not a sponsored post, just sharing the products that I like. Now, my particular sorrel is more of a sorrel wine. So it's heavy on the wine, and it's I think the end result is similar to that of a mulled wine. And if you've had mulled wine before, you know how good it is, right? So this is very similar to that in, in flavor and consistency. So now as you're adding your alcohol, you wanna make sure that you're tasted it for strength. Now this as it is, is pretty strong, at least by bystanders. Um, you wanna taste, you wanna add slowly and taste as you go. So next we're gonna go in with our sweetener. So whether you're adding brown sugar or granulated sugar or any variation of sugar, the choice is going to be completely up to you. Now for this recipe, I'm going to be using some simple syrup, some homemade simple syrup. Really easy to make. It's literally combining sugar and water um, on the stove. You want to heat it up on the stove and stir it until all the granules have disappeared, have, have dissolved out in the water. That's it. Then you want to allow it to cool. You have to allow it to cool before you use it in your sorrow. Now, I choose to use this method because I can be a bit impatient and a lot of times when you're using, um, you're adding sugar to a cold mixture, it tends to take a while for the granules to dissolve out and I don't want to have to wait for that. So I do this in advance, that way um, it's easy for me to sweeten whatever I'm sweetening. So in this case, it's my sorrow. So I'm going to be using my my simple syrups and that's what that clear liquid is and of course when you are adding your sugar when you're sweetening your sorrel you want to add it slowly and you want to taste as you go just to make sure it tastes exactly how you want it to taste that's it my love a delicious bowl of sorrel or sorrel wine um, whatever you want to call it it's going to be so good you're going to really like it now, you definitely want to refrigerate your sorrel. It's best um, enjoy cold or chill. So you'll definitely want to put this in the refrigerator and then you want to enjoy it later with a delicious slice of Jamaican fruitcake. But you can also store your sorrel for up to a year outside of a refrigerator. You would only need to add about another half cup to another cup of sugar. The sugar is going to act as a preservative and you're gonna also add um, a few grains of uncooked white rice to the bottom of the, the airtight container that you're gonna be storing your sorrel in. S excuse me, storing your sorrel in, and you wanna allow this to sit in a cool, dark place, and this will be good for up to a year. And as always, I wanna thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me today, and I hope you will give this recipe a try, as well as give this video a thumbs up. Now, if you still have not subscribed to my channel, I do invite you to subscribe right now and hit that notification bell. As always, one love and stay blessed, my friend.